like a light, hey, yeah. like a light, hey. Like a Along with them, top rank, Debella Entertainment, Devin Haney Promotions, Ferocious Promotions, and their tireless promotional partners, TEG Sports in Australia, and Duco Events in New Zealand. Introducing first, Fighting Out of the Blue Corner! He enters the ring wearing black trunks with gold trim. He rated at 60.71 kgs or 134.04 pounds. He hails and resides in Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. He is the former IBF, WBO, WBC World Lightweight Champion, a WBA Super World Lightweight Champion. His current world rankings are six by the WBA, fifth by the WBO, three by the WBC, and number one in the ring. Trained by Chris Backus, representing Ferocious Jim. He has 21 professional fights with 20 wins, one loss, 10 big wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the challenger, George Ferocious Camposis Jr. With white trim. He went in at 61.14 kgs or 134.81 pounds. He hails from San Francisco, California, USA, residing in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. He's trained by Bill Haney, representing Top Rank. He is an undefeated unified world championship fighter with 28 professional fights, 28 wins, 15 big wins coming by way of knockout. He is the world IBF, WBC, WBO lightweight, and WBA super lightweight champion. Introducing Devin the Dream Hayden. Fighters to the center ring, please, for ref referee Nakamura's instructions. Okay. Hey, stop, 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 Mike. Unified World Championship Fighter Miles, where is the rule of what's my message? Look at him. And uh, show your brain and a In this same city for George Cambosis Jr., he's been stewing, thinking of just one thing, revenge for Devin Haney. He said, at 23 years old, coming back after just four months off means I'm sharper, I'm faster, I'm stronger, and I'm gonna come out to hurt him. Out of the gate, I'm gonna let y'all know right now, in the first fight, Haney clinched 55 times, five in which he clinched in the first round of the first fight, taking off 41 point seconds off the clock. When you clinch, it's a part of boxing, people. You know, you disrupt the rhythm, the timing, you never allow your opponent to get going. Cambosis must avoid all the clinching that Haney likes to do tonight in order to win this fight. I hope that everything that Cambosis has said, that he's changed and things that he's doing different and all the mistakes he made, I hope all of that adds up to a better performance tonight. Cambosis has done way too much talking in the first buildup, not so much in this one, but not the performance or the type of reaction we expected from a guy who talked the way that he did. So I hope that translates to a better performance tonight. Is Cambosa switching from righty to lefty, trying to confuse Katsuhiko. Haney? That's interesting. For Haney, the key is the left jab. He's got to get that left jab right now. He's probing with it. He's pawing with it, trying to find range, but he needs to stick it just like that, not just to the head, but to the body, to stop all the madness from Cambosis, the switching back and forth. That will tame Cambosis right in his place. What Cambosis is trying to do with all that switching, what he's trying to do is he's trying to change, give different looks. He's trying to become unpredictable, but he must be careful with that switching in the wrong range because he can be off balance. He gets hit with a shot, he can go down. You want to keep a close eye on the referee tonight because he may not allow Devin Haney to clinch the way that he did the first time and that could change the dynamic of this fight. Keep an eye on the referee. 
That's clinch number one, fellas. This is already a different Nose fight, fellas. On the attack here at the close of the first round. Trying to understand why Haney's not attacking Cambosis when he switches southpaw right in front of him. Perfect opportunity. His feet is off the canvas when he switches to the southpaw stance. And Haney hasn't made him pay yet for switching stance right in front of him. from Devin Haney. To find that rhythm from the first fight. Haney's missing. He's missing the target. And I don't like that, that lead left hook oh. from Haney. He's throwing that lead left hook from the middle, gentlemen. Directly on the line. And Cambosis can be waiting for a right hand. Over the top, beating that left hook. No pressure, no pressure. In the first two rounds from George Cambosis that he was able to muster in the first fight in the month of June. And coming into this fight, when we sat down with him, he said, uncertainty is going to be my friend. If Devin Haney doesn't know what I'm doing, then he has to react to me and not take the lead. in this fight than he did the first fight. He's been to Australia before. He knows what the hostile crowd feels like. He knows what Cambosis brings to the table. I think he can slowly start to pick things up because he'll allow Cambosis to do what he's doing, and we don't know. He doesn't know how the judges are scoring, and he can set himself up to lose a decision. He's got to step it up little by little in this fight. Cambosis also needs to pick up his offense. A lot of movement, a lot of different angles he's given, but he has to punch and he has to land just like that. 
See, Haney's now starting to time that rhythm of Cambosis. That jittery movement from the outside. He's starting to land lead left hooks in his jab more often than not. Haney. <laughs> Haney doing exactly what I was talking about. He caught, rabbit punt. he caught Cambosis in sequence as he was switching from righty to lefty, and he caught him right in the midst of it. Cambosis has to be mindful of his body position inside. He's giving up his neck and his head. He's allowing Devin Haney to press down on him, which is draining for a fighter. He's got to slip inside and let both hands go. He's giving up position on the inside, and he's actually tiring himself out. Clean right hand by Haney landing while Cambosis was in the southpaw stance. Double right hand as Cambosis was tripping over Haney's feet. And another right hand from Haney. Lands on Cambosis' chin. Great finish to this third round from Devin Haney as Cambosis tries to fire back. And he comes in head first. with trainer Chris Backus, who worked his first 14 professional fights. He said they watched films of legends like Roberto Duran, Julio Cesar Chavez, fighters who lost, but who came back and became legends because they were able to make excellent boxers uncomfortable in the ring. And that's what he's trying to do against the champion, Devin Haney. Cambosis is trying to make himself unpredictable, but he's making himself predictable by doing so. He's outside at mid-range, moving, switching stances, and Haney is finally starting to make him pay. Well, those movements, Tim, to your point, are rehearsed. Those are rehearsed movements. He's doing the same movements when he's right-handed, the same defensive movements when he's left-handed, and a smart boxer will pick that up. A sharp boxer will pick that up. 17 clinches tonight already by Haney. It's the fourth round right now. Remember, 55 clinches by him in the first fight. Nice right hand there from Haney. And, and Tim, I think the big difference here is that some of those are being initiated by Cambosis in this fight. See, the problem is Cambosis, when he, when he throws, he lunges forward. And then he gives his hands because he's looking to tie up because he's not looking to get caught with any shots from Haney. And both is his best when he goes. You wind him up and he goes. He did that against Tiafimo Lopez and that was a career best performance for him. But he's trying to think and outwit a guy like Devin Haney. He's never going to win that battle. He has to believe in himself, see an opening and let his hands go. this here of George Cambosis in round four. What I see from Haney is he's calculated. He's looking to line up that right hand. He's being patient, being calm, and he's going to run Cambosis into that right hand. And he's in position too. He's under his feet. He's always poised. Even when Cambosis does that, he spins around, gets himself back in position, and he starts all over again. dominant performance in terms of a complete shutout that Devin Haney had in the first fight, but you can see the class in Devin Haney, and you can see some improvement in George Cambosis as well.
Well, it's a rematch, and I, I wouldn't expect the same exact fight. If everything that Cambosa said is true, he should be better this time around, both physically and mentally. And now it's up to Haney to make those adjustments to the adjustments that Cambosa has made, and the fight is still early. This Haney is, is looking for a knockout. 54 to 30 so far through five. Yeah, to your point, Bernardo, he's looking for a knockout. Haney is not moving around a whole heck of a lot. He is standing his ground against Cambosis. He's not being forced back in any way. And I think Haney has action to do that. I think going to the body is key, keeping the jab pumping is key, and taking advantage of these opportunities. He's a very patient fighter. He's a counter puncher by nature but if he's going to stop cambosis he's going to have to invest in that body and those will pay dividends up the road and haney's going to have to keep that right hand up also Guys, because cambosis too, is because looking for that left hook would also serve cambosis well to go to the body Nice combination from Haney. Nice right hook from the American. Just catching Cambosis coming in as a bull. You see what happens to a fighter when he gets hit cleanly with shots. And he knows he's not winning a fight. He results back to his original self. You don't see now Cambosis switching his feet and moving all crazy and erratic like he was early on. That tells you right there. That's the indicator. He's been beat by now by Devin Haney. Good jab from Devin Haney. Another good jab. I haven't seen very many jabs to the stomach from Haney tonight. That jab setting up the right. That was a headbutt from Haney. Can you Pambosis? Nice left hook there from Pambosis trying to close out round five. Start it! Start! Start! No boxing! Talk to both fighters about their motivation for this fight. For George Cambosis, it was regaining those belts. He lost to Devin Haney. For Devin Haney, I spoke about the pride, and he said, look, the first time I wanted to get rid of all that email champion stuff, come here and become undisputed. Now I want to be in the top 10 ESPN pound for pound list, but I know that that requires a dominant performance, maybe even a knockout. These are moments when Haney should be investing to the body with a jab, pot shots, Looping right hands and left hooks to the body when Cambosis wants to rest. Oh, he one, can't. Two. Good shot right there from Haney. And that will make those one twos that he's landing even more potent. Big left hook there from Haney as well. Cambosis is so range, confused Tim. right now. He's so confused, Bernardo. Everything early on he did didn't work. Now he's dropping back to himself. Now he's running into shots from Haney. Cambosis can't find any answers on getting inside and finding the proper range or the right range to land his offense on Haney. told me the more desperate he gets, the more risk he takes, the more chances I will have to punish him.
Handy choke Cambosis to his face at the way in. What a nice right. That you don't have any power. I don't know if he was just playing mind games or if he really believes that. But that's got to be discouraging if you're George Cambosis to hear something like that on the eve of your fight. I'm just gonna let you know right now, when you get hit with single right hands, I'm talking about a power shot, a single right hand power shot. My goodness. That's impeccable timing by Haney. Don't shake your hands. But it's discouraging, Tim. My goodness, when, Dre, when you oh. think about it, you're, you're shooting a power shot, you're exposed. Green fight, green fight. Haney's throwing a lead right hand, he's landing, he's exposing himself and not getting hit in return. Very, very discouraging for George Cambosis. And now it's back to the jab show for Devin Haney here as we near the midway point of this fight. And you'll recall just how devastating that jab was to George Cambosis, the last one to jump. Devin Haney looking clean and George Cambosis looking the worst for wear. In the corner of Cambosis, his father, Jim, was saying, what the F are you doing? Because he sees what we see, 83 connects for Devin Haney compared to just 39 for Cambosis, who had early success, guys, but he's reverted to the first fight, and that's scary because Devin Haney is now looking to punish him. Well, all the emotion is out the window from Cambosis. All the things he told himself since the last fight in June. Once you start getting hit and then you can't hit your opponent and it takes you back to that dark place that you were in that first fight, to Tim's point, you revert back to who you are. So he's got a puncher's chance, but he knows that he can't compete with Devin Haney straight up, and that is extremely discouraging, and his corner needs to try to give him something to try to get himself back in this fight. And I'll say it again, I think Haney has room to step it up and yes. look for the stoppage if he wants to because he's already got the mind of Cambosis. The next thing to fall is the body. Cambosis trying to sell out here in round number seven and build some momentum, give this crowd something to cheer for. What a right from Haney. <laughs> Lead right hands, pop shot from the outside. That's understanding distance, range. It's disrespectful. <laughs> Lead right oh hand in the middle of the ring, time and time again. It's just disrespectful. Haney now, you look, look, he's looking for the, he's looking for the left hook now. You see him sitting on that front foot, pushing off that back foot, looking for the left hand. Haney can step it up. Cambosis just needs some help finding the door. He'll stick around oh, if you allow him to. Right there from but Haney can step it up if he wants to. Fellas, you guys want to know the key? The key for this fight for Haney? Yes, it's the right hand. But what did they see in the first fight? Cambosis shoots his jab from the hip. That little time to bring that jab up takes too much time. And Haney is just timing it right over the top. Anytime he step forward, boom, shoot the right hand over the top. It's going to hit him every single time. scenes in the Cambosis camp, they're still in play today. He's got a different trainer, and the guy who got him to the title, his manager, Peter Kahn, got a letter on October 3rd firing him. Now both the trainer and the manager have sued Cambosis for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Remember, this is a guy who was an obscure contender a year ago. According to the court papers, he made close to $5 million last time, a guarantee of $2 million this time. Maybe he's better off with a new trainer? I don't think so, but I is this a guy who's cashing out, or is this a guy who's been distracted? 
Well, it's a guy who's taken a lot of right hands from Devin Haney so far. And Haney <laughs> said, look, Cambosis beating Teofimo was no fluke. He was surprised. I was bred to be here, and I expected this. And he expects to come out victorious, and he expects to punish Cambosis. He is punishing him. This is target practice right now. No rough. At this point for Cambosis, it's not about X's and O's. This corner needs to find some inspiration. They need to find a spark and get Cambosis throwing punches. If he poses, if he tries to look cute like he's trying to do, or walk around Haney without any answers, the same thing is going to continue to happen. He's got to let his hands go. This is about inspiration right now for Cambosis. It's not about X's and O's. It's about selling out, Dre. He got to sell out. This time to go for it. My message to Cambosis would be, you said God, you wanted your belts back. Comparison. You said you were different. Now it's time to show it. You got to back up the talk if you want to be a champion again. This fundamental boxing that Haney's putting on George Cambosis in the first fight, and in the second fight, the first fight was more left-hand dominant. This fight is more right-hand dominant. But it's all the same. It's fundamental boxing. Just look at the lead hand of Cambosis. Anytime he gets ready to shoot the jab or shoot a punch, he drops that hand. And he's just timing him right over the top. under the left eye of George Cambosis. A mouth and irritation. Nice right hand from George Cambosis here at the close of round number eight. He only has a shot if he throws. Oh, seeking angles to do damage. <laughs> round eight. Cambosis gets the crowd on their feet here in Melbourne, Australia. Two cuts, the right eyelid of Devin Haney is cut, and the right side behind the ear of George Cambosis is cut. So both fighters are now bleeding, but obviously there's more concern from the Devin Haney corner because of the location. But, Dre, you talked about inspiration, and this may be just the inspiration Cambosis needs. Absolutely. If the blood doesn't do it, nothing will. This should give Cambosis just what he needs, the shot in the arm that he needs to stop thinking and to start punching. But you can tell Cambosis is still overthinking every move because he doesn't want to get counted. Nice left hook from Cambosis. Good physical strength inside for Devin Haney. Cambosis tried to push his head down and push him to the canvas. Haney said, no, I'm not going to allow it. Did Cambosis finally find a key to some success? He finally found the safe place that Haney likes to go to. He likes to lean on that back leg, likes to lean on the right side. And Cambosis jabbed and hooked him when he got in that position. Now's the time for Cambosis. Oh, nice right hand oh, from Cambosis. Good shot right there. Haney comes back on the right of his own. Referee is doing a phenomenal job tonight, by the way. He's doing his job and staying out of the way. Ooh, look at the face of Cambosis. That's mostly blood from Haney, though, and his own from the side of the head. Oh, actually, he's now cut on the left eyelid. Good catch there, Tim. Big right hand from Devin Haney. And that cut was probably...
likely caused by the first right hand that Haney landed in this round. And now he's doubling up, uh -oh. following with the left hook. Gambos is talking to him. Spartan Warrior with a good finish there at the end of round nine, but it was the two big right hands that Devin Haney landed that really made a few of 200 jabs landed compared to 20 of 88 for Cambosis. And guys, there's always been a comparison with Devin Haney and Floyd Mayweather Jr., but a lot of people said he fights like Pretty Boy Floyd. Tonight, I see more of Pretty Boy Floyd than I do the money Mayweather and that's a good thing in terms of the description for Devin Haney. Yeah, I don't Haney's know if I'm going to go that far. A chameleon tonight. Whatever he needed to be, that's what he's been. <laughs> when he needs to be aggressive, he gets aggressive. When he's allowed to box, he boxes. We're seeing a more aggressive Haney right here. I think he's doing what an undisputed champion is supposed to do. He's trying to defend his belt. He's looking for a knockout, fellas. Now it's a combination of Devin Haney, the right followed by a left. And that blood waking your opponent up goes both ways. may be hurt. His legs are leaving him. It's time for Haney to switch up the cadence. Throwing Devin combination Haney doing for him. what he said he would do. He needs to stop the loading up, though, Bernardo, and just let those hands go. Switch up the cadence. Throw combinations instead of one or two hard shots at a time. He's got to go down to the body. He hasn't thrown one body There's shot. There's a big right hand that's over the ear. Devin Haney finding a home for his shots here in an impressive 10th round. And here comes Cambosis trying to answer. Cambosis is ready to go. He just needs help. Still dangerous. He'll throw a big shot that you have to look out for, but he's discouraged, he's beat up, and he's ready to go. Ooh, another left hook from Devin Haney. Lands on the chin of Cambosis, who's proving to take a good shot here. Remember, he went down against Teofimo Lopez in the 10th round and then came back strong in the championship round. It's tough because anytime Cambosis lands a good shot, Haney takes it well and answers right away. My goodness. right hand from George Cambosis caught Devin Haney over committing here at the end of round number 10. With George Cambosis coming over to be checked out by the fight doctor because at the end of that 10th round his face was crimson it was a crimson mask and that's because Devin Haney has landed 169 to his 65 punches 96 of those power punches compared to 42 power shots from George Cambosis, who is going to have to do something beyond special. In the 10th round, it was 34 to 1 in favor of Devin Haney. If Haney had a body attack in this fight, along with those clean head shots that he's landed, Cambosis may be out of there by now. And if Haney had more punching power, <laughs> this fight should have been over a long time ago. Haney is lacking the punching power. I mean, I'm, I'm a little scared for him at 140 pounds. I know what you're saying, Tim. He doesn't have the one hitter quitter, but he's an accumulative puncher. But if the body oh, was mixed that. in with those clean head shots, I think it would do the job. I understand that because I wasn't a, I wasn't a, a, a prolific power puncher. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of punching power. And I would have to beat on God. That's why I didn't have many knockouts. But I'm just saying if he had... That one punch knockout power, this fight would have been over a long time ago. He has that long right. 
Yeah, but having a lack of punching power, see, that's allowing Cambosa to still be around, and that's just it. That's all I'm talking about. But to your point, Dre, if he goes down to the body and weakens him even more, then he has a chance in knocking out Cambosa. Good little body shot right there from Cambosa. Just too far and few in between. Try to sneak him upstairs with that overhand right hand Bosa's did. And Haney. Try to throw the jab to the stomach and the overhand right to the head. That was partially blocked. I love the physicality that Haney's using in the inside. He's using that forearm. Something Mayweather, to your point, Bernardo, something Mayweather used, that lead forearm to frame shots. Put punches up on a pedestal. Put that head up on a pedestal. Now that's what Cambos has needed at least four or five, six times per round. Just wasn't able to mount up that kind of offense. But you see it happen in spurts. Nice right hand from Kevin Haney once again. Whenever he gets an opportunity, you make sure Cambosis pays. And those clean shots is what takes Cambosis back to that psychological dark place where he stops believing he can win. Oh, big right to close out the round from Cambosis. Twelfth and final round, Devin Haney told me, people underestimate my power. If Cambosis could have been aggressive that first fight, he would have been. He felt my pop. Maybe it's not knockout power, guys, but it's respectable. And Cambosis' face shows the wear after what Devin Haney has done throughout the first 11 rounds. Well, that's the point I was trying to make earlier. We think that we highlight punch at punching power in the one hitter quitter type of fighter often, and that's fine, but there's different types of power in this game. And Devin Haney has studying power at times. Sometimes he has stinging power, and he's right. If he had no power, George Cambosis would throw caution to the wind and throw whatever he wanted to throw without fear of getting hit. Something is making Cambosis think two and three times before he opens up. Cambosis, Cambosis is right in his grill right now. <laughs> I can tell you that much. To the moment. It's not about some fighters fight to the level of the opposition. Haney fights to the moment. You know, the last time out, everybody said he was boring, it wasn't entertaining. You know, it was a whitewash performance. He dominated the fight. Now he's standing his ground. He's looking for the knockout. He didn't bag up a whole heck of a lot. He's, you know, he's holding still or tying up, I should say, or clinching. But, you know, he's fighting, a, a, I think, a better fight this time around, a more entertaining fight. Three matches are hard, especially when you've dominated the first one. It's almost like you got to trick your brain into thinking you didn't dominate the first one and create new ways to go do the same thing all over again. Very, very difficult to do a repeat. Good kind of right hand from Devin Haney right there. But, he's, but the crazy part is, Dre, he is dominating still, but just in a different he is, fashion. But I mean, I'm saying to get to this point, it's hard. It's hard to do what he's doing again for the second time. You ain't lying about that. Not to mention, back here in Melbourne, Australia, there's been a lot of tension. There's been a lot of drama in the buildup for this rematch. And now we just await the decision from the judges as Devin Haney and his team congratulate one another. George Cambosis and Devin Haney in the center of the ring, kind of letting bygones be bygones, just the competitive juices of these two champions. And here we go to the decision for this undisputed world title rematch. Ladies and gentlemen, could, could you please show some appreciation for these two fighters? What a war! After 12 rounds of world championship lightweight boxing action, we got the judges score cards for a decision. Leshnik Jankowiak scores the competition 119. The five lightweight champion of the world, Devin the Dream. 